my fellow readers. In this video, I'm going to talk about The Golden Sheep by Kaori Ozaki. Um, wow. <laughs> this is a three volume series, so it's very, very quick, but it is intense. <laughs> so how to explain the events of The Golden Sheep? I'm going to say it's, it's slightly difficult, only because when it opens, you're not sure of what to expect. You see a young boy who's gone, not young, uh, a young boy, but not like a boy boy, high schooler. You see a high schooler who's gone to the convenience store and he's purchased some stuff and he's like talking to himself about things, but you know, you know, something bad is happening. Um, and the, it, it becomes kind of quickly apparent that this character is attempting suicide and he's stopped by a high school girl who like smashes her guitar on the car that he has locked himself into and and so <laughs> you're immediately like what is going on and then you're pulled back um, and the story the full events of the story start to unravel that main part of the story begins when Sugu is moving back to town um, where she lived as a very little girl um, with her mother and her sisters, and you don't know exactly, like, why they're coming back. There's sort of this talk that sounds like their dad died, um, but it's not, not that dark for that part of the story. <laughs> Essentially, the women of the family are relocating back to their, their old hometown, and, uh, I guess they had been living in Osaka because there's, uh, comments about an Osaka accent later, um, but now they're they're back to this hometown, and immediately upon getting back, uh, Sugu wants to reunite with her childhood friends. So she I think sends them a text, and um, invites them to meet at at Sheep Park. So it's the where there's the big like golden sheep statue, and so she goes there that night and. Her three friends do show up, so you have like Yushin, who was always like the the heroic figure that would be their big defender. Then you have her female friend Asari, who we find out very quickly has had a crush for like ever on Yushin. And then there's Sora, and Sora was the um, more quiet artistic friend. And uh, <laughs> if you paid attention to the beginning, then you know right away that, oh, Sora is the one that was just trying to kill himself at the very beginning. So what happens there? And you think when the four group of friends reunite, oh, this is nice. You know, the friends coming together. What, what What's going to go wrong? But then you very quickly see that things are not as nice as they're trying to appear for Sugu. Um it becomes quickly apparent that uh, Yushin, for whatever reason, is very abusive and bullying Sora. Um, and we don't know why, but this just for whatever reason, these friends are not so great of friends anymore. Um, and when school starts up, uh, Tsugu is excited to be with Asari and be friends again and have her best friends. Um, however, uh, Asari is kind of a mean girl. Um, and at first, it's it's more like, let's mistreat some of these other girls for whatever reason. Um, but then, uh, Asari becomes jealous of Tsugu hanging out with Yushin, who, as I said, she's liked Yushin forever. So immediately, it's like, who is she to come back into town? And, you know, she's she's got her, her foreign ways and her, her big boobs. <laughs> who is she to talk to Yushin? And so Asari very quickly, like, makes her friends begin to bully uh, Sugu and really, like, shut her out of everything. So, like, they they pull mean pranks to her. They um, exclude her during lunch so that she has to eat alone. Um, just, just miserableness. So we end up with two characters, Sora and Sugu, who are being bullied, um, ostracized, and just made to feel terrible and depressed. And, you know, for Zugu, she's especially confused because these were her, her friends, her best friends that she 
was so sad to leave when she was little and it wasn't her fault that she had to leave. And now it's like the relationship is a mess and she doesn't understand what happened. She doesn't understand why she's being treated the way that she is. She doesn't understand why they're treating one another the way that they are. Um, and so she, she's really sad about this. And um, for Sora, it just keeps getting worse with the abuse from Yushin and Sora sort of gets what's going on with Yushin, but also doesn't completely understand. Um, and I think there's a limit to how much you can deal with um, when it comes to abusive situations. And so for him, he does reach this breaking point where he attempts suicide. And that is when Sugu stops him and she breaks her guitar. And she's just like, I don't understand what happened. And then they decide to run away together. <laughs> so the two of them head off um, and she wants to, I, I, I don't know if she actually had a plan, but she does end up running into her father. So we do discover like, oh, her father's not dead. They just divorced. Um, <laughs> and um, I don't want to give too much away, but they do end up finding like a place to live and work and I think the families end up like covering for them because it semi gets understood that they need this time away, that they were in a very bad place and that they need time to reassess and refine themselves, like discover themselves because they were getting too lost in the, the darkness, essentially. Um, so the families are very understanding and I think they talk to the schools and stuff and, um, so the two of them end up working in the city and there's just all these like little charming things. And in the meanwhile, it's telling you like the stories of what is happening with Asari and with Yushin and how they're feeling and more of the backstory to you about what happened. And I don't want to give any of that away. I would just say that this is a very emotionally driven piece of work. Um, and it deals with a lot of hard issues like you know, bullying and abusive friendships and um, really even other kind of mistreatment because uh, Yushin's story, I'm not going to give him a pass on how he was treating his friend because I, that, that shouldn't have happened. Like how he twists the relationship should not have happened, but what he had to deal with was also really crappy and it wasn't anything that was his fault and so he was dealing with issues of being ostracized and, and misjudged too he went in the wrong direction from it but it is like a whole thing where you you learn more about the characters and you can understand it a bit more i still don't give it a pass because i don't think it was acceptable to be as abusive to sora as he was being but I, I just found that this story is, it just sucks you in and it is so realistic and authentic and heart-wrenching <laughs> and a little bit heartwarming too, um, especially as you see people develop and change and reaffirm who they are as people instead of what they've been told they are, especially through like abuse. And so it was really, really good. Um, I would highly recommend this one. And I love the feel of these covers. They have like velvety covers and it's so nice. <laughs> these were published by Vertical Comics. And like I said, they're complete in, oh, I got these backwards. They're complete in three volumes. So it's a very easy series to collect too. Um, you're not getting too much thrown at you. You know, you're going to have a, a concluded story within three volumes. The artwork is very soft and gentle and so fits with the story and the theme of the story. Um, I liked Sugu and and her guitar playing ways. She loves playing like classic rock songs and 
She's really good, and I loved Sora. Uh, he's like the gentle artist. I don't think he wants to pursue manga, but I just love that he is an artist, and that's like a part of his soul, even if that's not like what he wants to do as a job. It's just part of himself, and I loved that. Um, such a good work. And um, I did want to mention, since I'm mentioning that, I'm not going to do a whole review on this one either, but this is Kaori Ozaki's other work, um, The God's Lie. This is a complete one-volume story. And this is even more emotionally devastating and disturbing than The Golden Sheep. Um, this is intense, and it deals with, like, abandonment and neglect. And it's just, it's, it's very, very good, but very, very heart-wrenching. Um would highly recommend again just a warning there about like abandonment and, and abusive situations and neglect but good <laughs> it's so good <laughs> um yeah so there's two works by Kaori Ozaki if you want to check out I would highly recommend that is it for this video until next time bye